Rub up your engines! Reyes Jose says, I got a 1989 Cadillac Fleetwood 5.0 liter 307 motor, and it says it should take 10 weight 30 oil. Should another oil should I add? Now there's a lot of miles. So stick with the original. Okay, well, you didn't say what kind of miles I had, but it was designed for 10 weight 30 oil. It's an 89, so it's a pretty old vehicle, you know? A lot of cast iron parts on that car. So, you know, it can take it. I just keep using that oil. I don't advise using a heavier weight oil in the winter because it might not flow. Your engine will wear out faster. 95% of your car wear occurs on startup. So, when you're starting your car up, if you got a heavier oil, the top of the engine will wear out faster. You don't want to put a heavier oil in, especially in the winter. Now, let's say it starts burning oil. Uh, you go to like a 2040 weight in the summer, but I'd still use the 1030 in the winter. I wouldn't switch it to a heavy one in the winter. You know, unless you live in Hawaii or something. If you live in the rest of the United States, especially northern northern states where it gets cold, or Alaska, you don't want to put a heavier oil in in the winter. Oh, for Chevy Tahoe says, will an engine without a turbo last on the interstate? My wife got a new job. She goes 51 miles each way. She got a 2010 New Beetle with 2.5 liter from her parents. It's a stick shift. Parents gave it to her because she didn't drive it much. It only has 33,000 miles. She's worried about driving it every day. Will it damage the engine? It's naturally aspirated. We don't get rid of the Beetle because it's all worn out. The New Beetle was kind of a failure, but the main reason it was a failure was because it had a horrendous automatic transmission. When I was at CBS, the news director there, he got one for his daughter. The tranny broker cost him 7,500 bucks, and this was 20-something years ago. So that's why pfft, everybody in the United States drives automatic transmissions. That's a standard, and it actually can last quite some time. Now, it's only got 33,000 miles for a Volkswagen. That's nothing. It's the trannies that wear out. That's a standard tranny. Those don't wear out like the automatics, right? And understand this, driving on a highway, if you're driving 60, 70 miles an hour, that's equivalent to about 10% wear on your car of stop and go city driving. So that's the best thing for your car. Now, I have to put a disclaimer here because let's say you live in Houston, Texas, and you're commuting back and forth 26 miles each way on the interstate highway in Houston, you're going to be going four or five miles an hour if you do it in regular work hour because there's gridlock and it's all jammed up, in which case it will wear out a lot faster. But if you're a normal place where you can actually go the speed limit on a highway, then no, don't worry about it wearing out. It's a lot Lot less wear. You're not braking. You're not shifting gears. It's just going down the road. Plus, the big thing with that is it's a standard transmission, and you won't have the transmission that they put in the Beatles that broke down and pretty much led to them stop making the Beatles because people had such a bad taste in their mouth from those stupid trannies going out. Jack Chungerbrew says, I have the infamous death wobble on my 2011 Chevy Express 3500. I bought it in 2020. It was military. That had a lot to do with my confidence in buying it. It's meticulous, but it has the wobble at 50 miles an hour. Not before, not after, only at 50. The steering wheel shakes violently. I've had idle arm, pit arm, swear arm, got a front end alignment. The guy said the front end's tight. I watched 100 videos. What could it be? All right. Well, you definitely want to have the wheels and tires checked to see if the tires are out around, the wheel rims are bent. You might put the front tires in the back and the back in the front, see if it makes any difference, because then you'll know. If it's really shaking on the steering wheel in the front, and then you put the front tires in the back, and then maybe the back shakes, but the steering wheel doesn't shake anymore, it's the tires or rims that you just moved back there, right? You do say you had it aligned. I would want to make sure you had it aligned to the guy who knows what he's doing, because on that particular vehicle, they had problems with aligning them correctly. Even GM was giving the wrong data out to the front end alignment guys. You need to find an absolute pro. When I was in Houston, I used Cotton Brothers front end alignment. And on some of the Chevys, they actually gave information to Chevrolet to show them how to align their own front ends because they didn't know how to do it. Sometimes the information that these guys have, if it's a modern guy doing the front end alignment, he's got one of those laser machines. The only thing he's doing generally is going by the data in his computer. And if the data's wrong, it doesn't matter how accurate his laser is, he's putting the wrong data in, garbage in, garbage out, the car will shake. And you can have an alignment problem that'll do exactly that. Shake it just 50, not before, not after. So find a really good alignment guy who knows about those vans and start there. And of course, like you say, put the front tires in the back, back in the front. If the shaking moves more to the back than the front, your tires and or rims. It's got to be one of those things. 96 GT Mod says, my engine stalls when I come to a stop. Got 07 Buick. It stalls when it's warm and coming to a stop. It starts right after. Two mechanics gave it up. It has 100,000 miles with no codes. When you go to slow down, 
The car is decelerating and generally it'll put less gas to the fuel injectors. Let's say your fuel injectors are dirty and they're not spraying right. When you decelerate, it'll conk up, it'll start right back up again. So start by having your fuel injectors cleaned. I found my friend Bernie in Albuquerque, New Mexico. He sells a cleaner that's phenomenal. You just put it in the gas tank, drive it 250 miles or so. It cleans the carbon out. If that fixes it, thank me and Bernie for fixing your car for putting a can of cleaner in it, right? You can also watch my video, make your car run better with a little spray cleaner. You can clean the throttle. You can clean the mass airflow sensor. That can get dirty. That can do that. Also check for vacuum leaks. You hear a little sucking sound when it's idling? It's a vacuum leak. Vacuum leak will do that all the time. You could simply have a vacuum leak somewhere. You can watch my video, how to find vacuum leaks on your car, check around, see if you can figure out where the vacuum leak is. Generally, it's one of those things. It runs okay. You don't have any codes. It's often something stupid like that that can be easily fixed without spending hardly any money at all if you try it yourself with cleaners rather than pay a mechanic because most mechanics mechanics charge 150 bucks an hour and you're going to be paying them to guess on your car. Why not do it yourself? Blevin 360 says my car won't start after a tune-up. I got an 09 Sienna. It won't start after I replaced the coil and all six spark plugs. I tried replacing three of the coil connectors and wires for one of the sensors with no luck. How can I get it running? Well, you got to figure out what's not working first. So do my video. Getting an engine running that cranks but doesn't start up. Scotty, type that in YouTube. Watch that video. Try to figure out what's not working. Here's the problem is you were running before you took all that crap off. Something went wrong when you did that work. The problem is, as you know, the back three spark plugs are under the intake. You had to take the intake to get to them. Those are a pain in the butt. Now, since you've got a car, it's an 09, so it's an older car and it's got 115,000 miles. All that plastic stuff you had to disconnect on the coils. They can break. The ignition coil itself, the assembly, just the fact that it's in there and you twist it and pull it out, it could break. You changed one coil, but you changed all six spark plugs. You probably would have been better off changing all six coils. At least the back three that are hard to get to, because the front three you can change anytime you want. Do my video. Get in a car running that cranks but won't start up. Watch that video. Figure out what's not. Maybe you've lost spark. Maybe you lost fuel. And check everywhere you work. You might have pinched the wire and now it's shorted out. Taking that manifold off. You might have vacuum leaks now. Check for vacuum leaks. You had to get the gaskets when you took the manifold on and off. Did you put a new gasket in? If you didn't put a new gasket in, it could easily be leaking, sucking air, and it won't start because it gets too much air and not enough fuel because it's sucking air. You might get a smoke machine at first. Hook up the smoke machine. See if any smoke comes out and say, oh, geez, it's leaking. I'm going to have to get a manifold gasket. You really have to put new gaskets in when you do the job. A lot of guys don't, and then they get a leak, and they won't won't start. It turns out that a bunch of these superchargers for Teslas, right? People are waiting 40 to 50 cars in order to get their charge. This particular situation happened in England. And of course, old Elon said, oh, my Tesla superchargers are the best in the world. We're all over the place, blah, blah, blah. So some of the people with all those people waiting, even though there were a few charges there, they were waiting five to six hours for a chance to plug it in. And of course, that takes another 45 minutes to an hour to recharge it then. If you want a big charge, right? It's comprehension that electric cars are going to be the future. Yeah, we're going to have to be an awful patient future. Of course, now this was in England, the United Kingdom, right? And it seems to me like the English love standing in queue. So I guess they don't mind standing there in queue in their car and waiting five, six hours to plug their car in, right? In the United States, that would not cut the mustard, as the saying goes. People would not accept crap like that. If people sell millions of these electric cars, that'll be normal. You remember back in the 70s when they had the gas shortage, people were waiting for hours in line. People couldn't stand that. Imagine if that became the regular situation of charging your car, that you're going to be waiting in a line for hours before you can even plug your car in. It takes a long time to charge them regardless of what anybody says. They say, well, we got the fast supercharger, 800 volts DC. You can get a whole bunch of charge in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, right? That will destroy these batteries over time. They're not made to be recharge quickly. You recharge any of these lithium batteries quickly, guess what happens? They lose their lifespan. You'll wear them out two to three to four times faster than you would charging them at a 
slower rate. Even a regular battery in your car. If you got a bad battery in your car, you got a short, somebody left the headlights on, what you want to do is put a trickle charger on that'll do one to two amps overnight. Then it will charge it correctly. It won't sulfate the battery. It won't overheat the battery, right? You start charging things super fast, they wear out super quick. Anybody thinks this is going to be an accepted norm? Maybe the British will accept it. They've accepted a socialized society where 67% of the people are on public assistance of some sort, but that wouldn't really fly in the United States, and I would be waiting in these kinds of lines. And as we all know, Elon promises everything. Oh, we'll have one on every corner next week, baby, you know. He's just talking through his hat. The plants that generate the electricity don't exist. If you have a Tesla supercharger station with a bunch of them there, and they're all being used, they use as much electricity as a town. Where is it coming from? Oh, magically it'll come from this guy. The politicians will wish it down upon us, right? The reality is, it'll be a long, boring, waiting future, and then hoping that you got the electricity that'll run the machine that you're waiting to plug yours into. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.